Good day, my fellow integrators. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to show how to send an ACE message, something that I'm going to create in the, the toolkit on premise uh, for me. And I'm going to deploy uh, that flow, and that flow is going to put a message on event streams. My deployment environment is uh, uh, Cloudback for integration, installation uh, uh, on uh, IBM infrastructure in, uh, in the UK. The desktop you see in front of you is the Cloudback for integration environment. Uh, I'm going to go to my event streaming environment. And uh, I'm going to create uh, a new topic. So for the topic name, I'm going to keep pick, let's just generic, topic 3. It's going to save it from the one partition, it's going to keep the data for a week, and the replication factor of 3. Very easy, you can see I've got a few other topics in there as well. To actually communicate with this uh, event streams, I need to go and get my connection information. So, so the first piece of information I'm going to need uh, the Bootstrap server. Now I've uh, pre-prepared a bit of this information. Let me just drag it uh, over here. Um, my Bootstrap server is going to be what I've just copied there, and uh, I'm also need a Scram user ID and password. I'm going to generate my Scram credentials here. So, uh, produce messages, uh, provide a scram. So, I'm going to type in here scram credentials. I actually need that name. I'm going to save it. My user ID is going there. Uh, produce messages, yes, everything there. I'm going to use it for all topics, all consumer groups, and all transactional IDs. Sometimes it gives me an issue here. Then I typically go back in here, and maybe it's because I've already got something with the name of Scram Credentials. Let's call it Scram Credentials 2. Next. All topics, all consumer groups, all transaction IDs, generate the credentials. There you go. So there's my name there. So let's replace that one. And uh, it's generated a password for me. Here's my Scram password. And I'm popping it in here. I also need uh, a certificate. So I'm going to download my PKCS12 certificate from here. I can just say download the certificate for me. Save. I've saved that in there. And after I've downloaded the certificate, you'll see there will be a password available as well. So I need to copy this password. And I'm going to save it here with my PKCS12 information. Now, we do need for ACE, we need uh, a JKS uh, certificate, um, not a P12. So I'm going to use the key tool for, um, to convert it from a, uh, a P12 to a JKS file out there. Now, this is the password I need to supply in here. So there is a password field. And there is another password field in there. I'm just going to keep the same password in there. I'm going to save this file. Then I'm going to run key tool, exactly this command against that file I've just downloaded. So you can see uh, there is that ESert. P12 file sitting there. If I run this and I've got an older version of Java uh, in my environment, I get this kind of error there. Uh, typically it, it complains about data isn't an object ID tag 48. Um, it, took, it took me a while to figure this one out. So I've downloaded a, a, a later version of Java and I've put it into a 
different um, environment for me so I'm just gonna copy my uh, p12 file in there okay so um, if I want to run this uh, against uh, a later version of Java my easiest is I'm just gonna copy this file and paste it into the, the directory of where my Java is sitting and copy it from there paste it here and I'm gonna grab my key to command and I'm going to run it against that file you can see you've got uh, one entry successfully imported go back to my file there's my JKS file I'm just gonna grab it out of here it and put it in my web directory so now I've got a JKS file that I need for my ACE environment and I'm going to give this certificate to my um, event stream environment okay, I think that is uh, the preparation we need from the event stream side I can actually close this environment and I can open up my um, H toolkit again inside my H toolkit I've already created a flow let me explain to you what I've done I've actually created a, uh, a REST API um, application uh, to do that you go to new uh, REST API up there and it pops up this window for you I've already uh, given the basic information I need for a REST so I can open my API editor Open API. Just make this bigger. What I've added in here is I've added a path. I've just called it Kafka Producer 2. And uh, inside this environment, I've added an operation, a post operation. And inside post, I've created uh, a response. Just one response, a uh, 200 response that says uh, all good. And I've um, created a request body that is application JSON and I've given it a payload you know because if you give it a payload later on you can just say generate for me a test data it'll use this payload to, to generate it for you and that's all the information you need from here you save it carry on um, if I then go to this edit the subflow environment it will open up the subflow for me associated with that uh, with that post I've added an HTTP header node in here and the only thing I'm doing is actually delete the HTTP header and then uh, I've added a Kafka producer node in here so this is what's going to talk to my uh, to my Kafka environment out there um, you can see if I go to my uh, basic setup I'm going to talk to topic 3 uh, let me just see if I look at my uh, topics yes that's the one I've created now and uh, for my bootstrap servers, because I'm actually going to make use of a policy, I'm just going to add a dummy as my bootstrap server. And for my client ID, I'm going to grab my Scram credentials. Now my Scram credentials is sitting here. Remember, I've saved it. Scram credentials 2. Copy it. And so that needs to be Scram credentials 2. Then I need to create save that I need to create a policy uh, event streams policy I've already created that as well but uh, you can if you want to create it from scratch say new uh, policy yeah, you give it a name and inside this policy you need to go and select a type of Kafka and I'm going to show you now what is the rest of this information in here. So I'm actually not going to make use uh, of, uh, of this policy in the essence of time. There's my demo policy. So the first thing I need to do is I need to grab my bootstrap server. Def1, Kafka Bootstrap, you see there's my complete Bootstrap server, and I pop it into the first line there. My security protocol, I need to go and select a SASL, SSL, 
and uh, just type in Scramshell 512. My SSL protocol, I can select TLS version 1.2 there, and then I need to get a, uh, a Kafka security ID. So I'm just going to type in the words Kafka security ID. Uh, you will see I've uh, added that information down here. There's uh, all the information you need to complete this note, and I've uh, picked the name Kafka Sec ID to sit there. This line, type it in exactly as is, then jump down to this line, uh, type in exactly as is. You'll see that is the name of that es-sir.jks file I've just uh, converted with a key tool. Uh, my SSL trust store type must be jks, and again I need to pick a sec ID. I've just picked the trust store sec ID there, and uh, enable um, SSL certificate host name, yes. There is uh, one more thing we need to do here, is uh, I need to actually upload the zip file of this uh, policy uh, to the cloud pack. It's going to right click, go to its properties, click on the position, go one level up, and you'll see here's the project folder. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to zip it for me as a espolicyproject.zip. There you go. And then I can close this again. Back in my um, flow, so it's this one, uh, inside Kafka producer, the one thing I need to do is I need to connect this policy to it. I go down here in my policy section and I need to say I'm going to browse my, my policies, pick this policy, okay, and then I can save my logic. What I also need to do is I need to create now a bar file of this. This is going to be uh, what I'm going to deploy on my cloud pack. So there is my uh, Kafka producer 2. Uh, I'm going to right click on it and say new uh, uh, bar file. I've already done that. Uh, so I'm going to go straight to my bar files to create a bar file for me. Um, and in here I'm just going to say create for me my bar file. Okay, and uh, that is what I need. Cloud Pack for integration environment. Uh, there is my uh, dash, my ACE dashboard. The first thing I need to do is to go and create a few configurations. I need three configurations in here. Uh, the first configuration I need is going to be a Trust store. Inside my trust store, I just need uh, the file name. Uh, this is actually that uh, uh, PKS12, uh, sorry, the, PK, uh, the, the, the JKS file. This is actually the JKS file uh, I need to just include here. see it supplied me a name up there so I can just hit the create button. I also need policy project. This is going to be uh, that policy uh, file I've created. So if I go to where my policy was installed, uh, there is the zip file I've just created. One thing here is that it doesn't like the uh, the underscores in here, so uh, to go and replace that with uh, dashes, and then I create it. And uh, I also need to create a, a set DB params. This is actually the uh, where I put in the credentials for my security, and uh, I've prepared a little bit of that uh, inside uh, my file here. I need uh, two lines uh, inside that environment. I need these two lines to go in there. So it starts with uh, trust store. And then I need to pop in the SSL trust store security identity. So I've it up here, I've saved it. This is our trust of security identity. This, this one's this one. Copy it. 
space. Then uh, the word dummy. Remember, I use the dummy in the in the flow. And lastly, I need to use the PKCS12 password. I've copied and pasted that before in here. Copy, paste it in there. Is that uh, that's one space? The next line I need in there is a Kafka and the Kafka security ID. And uh, remember, it, it will be security identity for Kafka. It's that one. And the next two fields will be the Scram user ID followed by the Scram password. So there's my Scram user ID. And my Scram password. Okay. And uh, I need to give it a name, so uh, I'm just going to say uh, db params. It's good enough. Create it. To ease life, uh, I'm going to go to my bar files and I'm going to import that uh, bar file. So my bar files is sitting down here. You see, there's my Kafka producer 2 bar file created just now. Open it and import it. Okay, let me create my integration server. If I go to back to my dashboard here, I can say, you see, there's no servers running at the moment. I'm going to create a server. I'm just going to do a quick start toolkit integration. Next, I'm going to select my bar file. Next. And if I've just created uh, these three uh, uh, configurations, they will all three be automatically selected for me. So I'm happy with that. I can say next. I'm going to give it now a name. I'm going to say Kafka producer um, two. What I typically like to do is I go into advanced settings and I scroll down to my CPU limit and I make it one CPU and the memory 502. It just makes it a lot faster to deploy on my site. Remember licensing requirements and things like that. And then create. After a few seconds uh, it will pop up the integration server uh, view for me. You can see there it says pending. I would go into my Red Hat OpenShift environment, look at the pods and uh, just sort it. You can see there's one a few seconds ago and it's busy coming up so I'm going to just wait until it's ready. Then it changes to ready. Um, if you're interested you can click on it, have a look at the, uh, at the logs in there to see if everything was, uh, was okay. I can typically see at the bottom, yes, there's no errors in here. And uh, I can go back here. Now, that what you need to do is this screen does not automatically refresh. So every time uh, uh, you've changed this environment, even if you, if you just updated the bar file, for instance, go and refresh the screen. It builds in some uh, uh, IP in here. And, and if you don't do that, stuff tends to not work. So I uh, refresh that screen. Now you see it's in a ready state. I can click on my Kafka producer too. This is the API, also important. You can see the API is actually started. I click on the API because I'm just going to use the API entrance to send some data to my flow. And my flow will try and add that data into event streams. Now I've created this uh, Kafka producer 2 post sitting down here. If you click on that, you'll see there's a try it button up here. Click on try it and then on generate. And this is where that data gets populated. If you remember from the JSON we've set up earlier in the, in the API call. And I can just now send it. So this will now send it to the uh, message flow, uh, the ACE message flow. And the ACE message flow, there you go, get an answer back. It's populated inside, uh, uh, it's it sent it to event streams. And let's go and have a look inside event streams. Uh, yeah. Here, let me just go back to my event streams. There's my event streaming. Open the link. 
I can look at my uh, topics. There's topic three. Look at the messages. You see there's uh, offset one. There's one message in there. I can click on that message. There's just uh, uh, the new message that's gone in there. I can go and test it again. Go to automation. Um, let's make this uh, first name Francois. I can send it again, get a 200 back, go back into my this environment, refresh the messages. There you see there's a new message and my name is Serena Ney. And that is how you send messages from ACE to event streams. Thank you.